I just was freak marking it. I just wanted to make sure that this worked. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Can you see the Can you see the slides? Uh, no, not yet. It still says closed sessions. I don't know. Have y'all opened the uh, the webinar? Yes, um, uh, Marjorie's going to uh, do that. So hopefully that will pop up in just a moment. Okay. Thank you. Great. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here again. Um, so I want to talk about something a little bit different today. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, how insurers incorporate information about vehicles into their pricing and some barriers that they face when doing that. And, um, and eventually at the end, I'll relate it back to alcohol detection technology, things like interlocks and dads. Um, so see if this goes. Doesn't look like this is advancing. Okay, there you go. Um, so insurers support safety um, in general. When vehicles crash less, it costs insurers less to insure the vehicles. Um, so one way in which insurers support safety is by supporting IHS, which you kind of heard about their support the last time I was here. I'm um, also supporting our sister institution, the Highway Loss Data Institute. And so one thing that Highway Loss a Data Institute um, gives insurers is some information aggregated across our member companies about how much it costs to insure different makes and models of vehicles. So for example, they give them information about how often claims are filed, so um, claim rates for different vehicles. So this up here shows just the best and worst vehicle models in terms of claim rates. Um, you can see some of the best models are really just sports cars that aren't driven all that often since these are rates per year that they're insured. Um, another thing that we give them information on is the severity of claims. And so severity means how much it costs to uh, fill, fulfill a claim when one is filed. So um, the, and up here I'm showing collision claim severity. So collision claims are uh, claims that you file when you do damage to your own vehicle. And so you can see the vehicles with the highest collision claim severities are the expensive vehicles. We have some Bentleys up there, some pretty expensive cars. Um, and then when you put those two things together, you get what we call overall losses. And so this is really the bottom line for insurers, how much on average it costs to insure a particular vehicle over the course of the year, taking into account how much individual claims costs and how often claims are filed. And so you can see that the overall collision losses are the highest for those really expensive vehicles, even though they might not necessarily crash as often. Um, so these are things that insurers uh, take into account in their pricing. Uh, you know, they want to be able to price policies fairly, but be able to, uh, or, or competitively, but still be able to not lose money on the vehicles that they insure. Um, and another thing that we give inf insurers information on are different kinds of safety technologies and how those are affecting claims. And so what you see here is uh, the change in insurance claim rates comparing vehicles with front crash prevention systems. So those are vehicle uh, technologies that keep you from rear-ending someone either by warning you or by breaking your vehicle so that you don't rear-end someone, uh, compared with the same kind of vehicle models that don't have this technology. I um, mean, the uh, yellow bars here are looking at those collision claims I was talking about before. Uh, the purple bars are looking at the kinds of claims you file when you damage someone else's vehicles. And so you can see these technologies are really bringing down claim rates. So they're good for safety. Um, but some of the bad news that we see is when we look at how much um, the claims cost for the vehicles that have these technologies. And so when we look at the collision claim severities, the claim costs, we see that for some of the vehicles with these technologies, their claims are actually more expensive when, when they file claims. Uh, and that's because some of these technologies are expensive and they're in kind of vulnerable places and get damaged a lot. So. Um, for example, this is shows uh, one of the radar units on a uh, Mercedes. And you know it's right there in the front of the car, and it costs $2,000 to replace when it's damaged. And so uh, for some of these vehicles overall, even though they're crashing less, the overall picture for these kinds of vehicles with these kinds of technologies is that they're actually costing insurers more, at least when it comes to collision claim coverage. And so you know that's something that can be a barrier for insurers. There can be some technologies that are good for safety and that reduce crashes, but that actually cost them more for insuring. Another thing that can be a barrier for insurers is just knowing what kind of technology is even on your vehicle. Um, you know, insurers really would like to have a robust way of knowing what's on your vehicle, and asking people is not usually enough. People don't always know what's on their vehicles. You know, people don't always tell the truth. I remember the first uh, 
car that I ever insured myself, you know, I remember the, my insurer asked if I had anti-lock brakes, and I said, well, I have a safe car, so if, of course I must have anti-lock brakes, but I didn't, but I still checked the box. You know, and so not always the best way of figuring out information. And so one way that insurers know about your vehicle is through your VIN. Um, every vehicle has a unique VIN, and there's some information that's hard-coded within the VIN, so things like the make, the model, the model year, um, the vehicle series, which would be if it's a two-wheel drive version or a four-wheel drive version, and the engine type. And there's also some other information that we can derive from the VIN if there's information or like technology that applies to all vehicles of a certain make, model, model year. Um, but one important thing is that the VIN usually doesn't have information about things that are optional on a vehicle or about aftermarket technologies. Um, so that study that I was showing you before where we were comparing vehicles with and without certain technologies, um, we were able to get information at the VIN level about which vehicles had these technologies, but we had to go to the vehicle manufacturers. It was a really arduous process to get that kind of information, and it's something that insurers aren't going to be doing. Um, so that's something that you know, they struggle with when they want to be able to price their policies you know, with technologies in mind. Uh, another way that insurers know about your vehicle is through telematics. Um, a lot of companies are using some usage-based insurance, which I think you'll hear about more from our next speaker. Um, but there are a lot of companies that are doing this these days. Um, these devices, there's typically two different types. Um, one that would go through, like a plug-in device that would go in through your OBD2 port, um, and devices that go through your phone. And there's a lot of different capabilities that makers of these devices claim that they have. Um, most of these devices will have an accelerometer on them so they can get information about vehicle kinematics. So if you're braking hard, if you're accelerating quickly, they know about your speed. Um, they also know information about your trips, so how many miles you're driving, um, if you're driving at night. And those are kind of the main types of information that are incorporated into this usage-based insurance. Um, but there's other things that um, these devices can detect. So if it's, th if it's a phone-based system, they can know if you're on your phone. Um, these devices can potentially warn people you know, about their speed, about their braking. Um, if you're using them as part of a fleet or if you're a parent, they can report information back to your fleet manager, to the parent, et cetera. But again, one thing that these uh, devices can't really do is get information about technology that's on your vehicle. So there is information that you can get through the OBD2 port about vehicles, um, but when it comes to some of these optional technologies, they're not part of the standard information that's required to be read in the same way off of every vehicle. Um, some of, for some vehicles, you can kind of like crack into the vehicle code and get some information from them, but you have to really go back to individual manufacturers to learn, you know, to what those different codes are, and it's something that you can't just get with kind of a off-the-shelf plug-in device. So that's something, again, to keep in mind for how insurers can figure out what's on your vehicle. <clears throat> so how do these things apply to alcohol technology, to interlocks, to things like DADS? Um, so when it comes to interlocks, uh, interlocks do collect information. You know, they are collecting information when people blow into them. Um, my understanding is that now, for the most part, this information is kind of downloaded in a, you know, hard-coded way that someone will come to your vehicle and take the information and then report it back to the state. Um, but, you know, it theoretically could be done in a more wireless way and something that could be incorporated in uh, a telematic system. And if that were the case, then people could possibly know that it's on your vehicle if, if you were an insurer. Um, to my knowledge, I don't think any insurers are you know, incorporating information about interlocks into their plans. Um, but some things to keep in mind that uh, that relate to interlocks or that when it comes to offenders, that interlocks are often uh, assigned in lieu of a license suspension. And so, you know, if you have an interlock, that's the only way that you can be driving and be insured. So insurers are not going to, you know, price your plan less because you have one if that's the only way that you're going to be driving to begin with. But it could be something that could be incorporated down the line when the offender doesn't need to have an interlock on their vehicle any longer. Um, and for both offenders and non-offenders, cost could be a limitation. So as of right now, you know, interlocks cost a bit to install and maintain. Um, and if the difference in your premium price isn't as much as the cost of the interlock, it doesn't seem like it would be something that would really entice non-offenders to put an interlock on their vehicle. Um, but 
this could be something that could be especially enticing maybe for fleets where they kind of have a vested interest in making sure their drivers aren't drinking um, and might also might also have kind of more of a you know reason to want to have an interlock on their fleet if they were getting some kind of um, pricing incentive in their insurance plan um, but yeah when it comes when it comes to interlocks right now you know it it definitely could be a challenge these aren't passive devices and aren't things that you know it's not not similar to just plugging something into your vehicle and having insurers know how you're driving and when it comes to vehicle based systems like dads um, if this is something that's an optional technology again insurers are going to have difficulty with knowing if it's on your vehicle um, it's something that's probably not going to be encoded in the VIN. It's something that's probably not going to be able to be detected through a telematic system. So just something to keep in mind that if insurers don't know that something's on your vehicle, it's hard for them to incentivize it. Um, so to sum up, you know, insurers are generally supportive of safety because vehicles that crash less are costing them less. But there are some things that you know, they have to keep in mind, and one is that not all safety technology is going to actually reduce costs for insurers and that it's difficult for insurers to know exactly what's on your vehicle. And that's all that I have this morning. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So uh, 